Good morning traders. Are you guys ready to get back into the trading action? We got a lot to talk about today. We got the Australian Central Bank with a surprise interest rate smaller than expected, 25 basis points. This is of course causing money managers on out there to say that the Fed would pivot quickly. We'll talk a little bit about this, but more importantly, we're going to focus on the intraday action. There's a lot going on right now. The SPY has had a recent bear market rally. We're going to go ahead and take a look to see if this can continue today. The yields on the Treasury are definitely one to pay attention to, falling uh, below the 3.59%, the 10-year. And this was at one time 4% last week. And so pay attention to the treasuries, pay attention to the dollar. It's been going down the last five days. Got a little bit of a push. We also got policies that will be released today from World White House on chip access. So pay attention to technology news later in the day. And at 10 a.m., we get the Jolts jobs opening. We got all this right here on live trading and, of course, some live trading action. Hit the like, hit the thumbs on up, subscribe below. This is your first time to the show. And let's get it started, live trading with Benzinga. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Those words have been dancing around my head all night. I mean, it's Vegas lore, that phrase. Good morning, traders. Let's get it started. Buy the dip is still working. Yes, Sean, you're definitely right about that. Good to see you, Leslie. Josh in the house. Let's go to it. Let's bring on Ryan Feluna. And we also got Buzz to infinity and beyond is how we're going to get after it today. Okay. Not shying away from the action. Got a little bit of energy. Got a little extra sleep ready to go. Fist on up. We got a battle back today. It was a red day for me yesterday. You know I'm trying to battle back today. Let's get after it. What's going I was on, gonna my friend? I was going to say, Mitch, uh, you had a ton of energy today. I, for a brief period last night, I was concerned after your red day that you were the fan that ran on the field of that Monday night football game and got absolutely destroyed by Hall of Famer Bobby Wagner. I, honestly, I wish I could have been that person because I would have pulled the move and then they would have signed me. You know, I don't like, know oh, if you would have pulled any move. The oh, only thing you would have pulled would have been your oh, hamstring or your groin. Oh, that they would have been like, damn, that guy can run 20 miles an hour? We're going to start this show. We're going to start this show with a PSA. Don't be a dumbass and run on the field of a professional sports game. And if you That's do, it. you better be fast. You better be fast. Better be fast. If you're oh, slow, man. that's not the thing for you, man. Not the yeah. thing for you. You better have some moves, man. You better you better whip it through the whole field before they get you. I've seen the soccer ones. Those are the best, really. The soccer ones. I don't know, man. It I was hard say. to top Bobby Wagner destroying somebody. A little bit later today, <laughs> was, I'm going to have to pull that, that video. We're going to have to pull that video and play it because, I, honestly, I missed the tackle, so I got to see this. Oh, my God. Should we do it right now or should I go into the market stuff? We'll do the market Wait. stuff at, at yeah. like around 1030 when things start dying down. Perfect. We'll, get, we'll, we'll have a little fun time for you guys. Let's get exactly. into it. Let's start bringing up the charts. Like I talked about before I came here yesterday, a trade given, right? Ryan, FSLR. Look at that. Right through the high there. I tried to uh, describe this trade for you guys in the rule of three yesterday before the market opened. Look at FSLR already through the highs. What did this going to do? Also, I gave you insight. Take a look at the solar moves today. You can look at ENPH getting some lift. You can look for SEDG to get some lift after it's been pulled down. SPWR, right? Sun power. What's going to happen to sun power today? <laughs> Already getting some lift. Let's look to see if solar can get that next step up today. That's what I'll be watching for. I'm going to go to Ryan for some smaller micro stuff. And, of course, I'll be back with some of the stocks that I'm watching today. Coal stock still in play. And a lot of burning of coal going to be going on in Europe to keep the, uh, keep it warm, right? I mean, at the end of the day, the furnaces have to come on. And sure. natural gas isn't going to be an option. I guess coal will be. And I know that our environmentalists won't like that. But at the end of the day, you know, what would you rather have? People going freezing into the cold or climate control concerns? Well, it looks like the coal burning is going to be the option to play. 
Now, uh, since you set me up by talking about small caps, we're of course going to start with a large cap and then also a spy prediction. <laughs> that, that's that's how we do things around here, Mitch. Go for it, Ryan. Then, then, uh, this is your part- turn, my friend. This is your turn to lead. You go whatever you want to get into. I that much I do appreciate. Um, one interesting news article that we had today. Before we take a look at the spy here, one interesting news uh, piece that came out today was that FedEx is going to be uh, accelerating their share buy uh, their share buyback. So remember, FedEx warned. They announced poor earnings. They pulled their guidance, and now they're buying back their own shares. So kind of an interesting thing to see here. Um, not necessarily sure what to make of that yet. I definitely want to see how it trades. Just thought it was interesting after some of the recent news that FedEx has given us about our economy and FedEx is often used as a bellwether for that. So just really, really interesting to see here this morning. Now, one of the other things that I want to talk about here is the spy, uh, for a couple of reasons. So yesterday, uh, obviously we had a bounce. You and I talked about shorting it, um, shorting potential levels on the pop. We have people in the chat that we're looking to short pops and and being still trying to trade to the downside despite having a market that was pushing up. And um, I'm in the same camp. So so I, I don't think that the lows are necessarily in, um, but we're having a couple of interesting, or we've had a couple of interesting things uh, take place here. So number one, just looking at the technical level, we did breach below 360. We closed below 360 one time, and the next day we actually bounced off that level. Now, I want to share some content here that comes from our happy hour show. Um, One of the gentlemen that is a regular attendee in the happy hour show uh, is a really good chartist, and he's been charting the spy, and he's been updating us on the spy. Uh, You might have seen him in here. It's Onyx Warrior. He's a a Benzinga pro member and a Benzinga trading community uh, member, and so I'm sharing his chart here. Yesterday on Happy Hour, just to kind of set this up, um, I suspected that yesterday's bounce was the result of being the first trading day of the month and the first day of the quarter. And we saw inflows into IRAs and 401ks. And perhaps that's why the market was up on really low volume, mind you. Uh, Today, the rally looks to be extended. Now, will we close green still or or, or are we going to go to the the lows and close red? That's yet to be determined. This is not meant to be a prediction for that. However, this is meant to kind of give you an idea of where we're sitting and some things to look for. So first of all, prior to the stock sell or prior to the spy selling off, he had identified this sideways trading area that goes all the way back to November of 2022. And we went right in there. And when the very next day, we actually reversed out of that. So the thought here is that if we do have a bear market rally, the next logical question is, well, how far is this rally going to go? And this chart is designed to give you some potential resistance points to look at if you do decide to trade either day trade or swing the SPY or anything that would rely on an up market in the big caps. So one of the things that you're seeing here is this candle is yesterday's candle. And one of the values that this can get to is the pandemic trend line. Now, this is about at 380. In fact, by the time we the price would get there, it would probably be maybe 380, 380, 50. So that's going to be your first level. Second one is going to be your 20-day simple moving average, which is at 382, 28 right now. So let's just call that 382. So right away, oh, and then and then third, excuse me, third, this 383.98 bear level, this represents a 20% decline from the highs that were recently put in. And that's at 383.98. Let's just call that 384. So between 380 and 384, we have some pretty significant points where the SPY could potentially reverse if this rally does continue. Now, one thing at a time here, right? This rally has to continue first. We have to see if we're going to keep being strong here today. We're definitely strong in the pre-market, but we've all seen this before. We're weak as soon as the market opens, the market reverses intraday. We're going to be watching all of that as long as we're on here. So I see a lot of people saying, I'll fade the 285s on the Qs. I think you meant 385, but uh, I'm with you there, Sean. I think that if this traded up to 385, I would also look to take a, um, a, sh- a short position via puts, 
right? So I can define my risk ahead of the trade since I don't like exposing myself to unlimited risk. So this again, I, I yesterday we kind of he, he was kind of saying that there is probably going to be a bear rally by the looks of it. I said I wouldn't be surprised if we just fell to the lows tomorrow. Here we are, markets up nearly 400 points this morning. So it looks like his thesis is going to be the one that plays out. And as a result, I wanted to share this here with the group because he's done an excellent job charting. And in some of these cases, he's got the spy down to like a nickel for 25 cents. Really, really impressive stuff with his numbers. So I wanted to share, share that with you. Tom, I see you selling into this pot. So there we go. So the, the real question is a lot of a lot of us think that the market is going to go lower. I fully believe that the market will go lower. Really, the question is when. So when you're opening up short positions, um, the question is going to be, where are you actually going to take that? Uh, Tom, um, you're selling into this pop. Would love to hear any of the targets that you're looking at. All right. Now we will get to the T's that Mitch gave us and talk about some of the small caps. First one that I have to mention, I just have to mention it, is Finger. This has been on the list for the last two days as stocks to watch here. We said yesterday, watch for Finger to, to break out when we were getting off the show, watch it in the afternoon, look what happened, uh, look what happened in the after hours. Now the question is here, this is inevitably going to pull back. Let's, let's not kid ourselves, stocks don't go straight up. This inevitably is going to pull back. The question is when. I've identified a number of different levels here where I think the stock can maintain. If we hold above this 758, I like this on a potential move through eight and then maybe some of these other levels. So this 808 level that I have on here, you could consider that eight to 808 as a resistance range. Although I do think if we cross through eight, we probably go somewhere closer to nine. So FNGR absolutely on the list today. Not gonna rush out and buy it. Definitely a chance that this stock pulls back here today, but we want to see if this can set up around any of our support and resistance lines. First two stocks on here are going to be penny stocks. As per usual, I'm just going to avoid them. If you want to chart them, go ahead. Uh, just pull up your movers tool, gainers pre-market session. They're going to be uh, some of the ones at the top of the list there, especially BitBrother here. This thing's up 100 and 18% here this morning. I'm going to avoid this. While while we're talking about it, since we just kind of brought it up, Bitcoin did cross above 20K and it is trying to hold there. We'll see what happens uh, as, the, as the day progresses here, but we are above 20K. So maybe some of these Bitcoin plays get a light. Next one here, another one from the list that we've been trading for the past several days, ATXI. This thing had a, a move yesterday, really kind of just moved out of the open. We had one really good bounce attempt and then a grind higher, but then it just kind of bled back a lot of its gains for the rest of the day. And here we are in the pre-market. We went as high as 1681. We've yanked considerably. We're down almost two bucks from that high. And in fact, uh, we've actually leaked a little bit more since I drew, oops, since I drew my first lines on this chart. Looks like we did turn around here 1458-ish. So we're going to watch this too. Again, none of these plays we're going to we're not going to rush out and buy any of these plays. We're going to wait for them to set up. We're going to be tactical. We're going to be disciplined. Uh, next here, H Gen. This is another penny stock that I'm going to skip over. We already covered Finger, uh, AERC. This has made some pretty good runs for us before. You can see a fairly volatile stock that does like to pop, and those pops can be considerable. Um, notice that uh, some of these lines that are in here really kind of line up well from back to middle of August, when one of the last times that we were trading this. So if we zoom in a little bit more. We're pretty much back into that range. We're holding 377. I love this for a move above four, and then maybe we can attack that 430 uh, level. We do have a catalyst here. AeroClean Technology shares are trading higher after the company and Molecule announced that they have entered into a definitive agreement to combine the companies in an all-stock merger. So, um the, uh, I'm, I'm the price here. I, I'm actually not sure what the price is, but it does or what the, the buyout price is. I think we'd have to go figure that out here. Uh, but in any case, the stock looks like it might be tradable today. We'll see how it sets up. Um, Posh is another one that you're going to see on here. Now, this was bought out and it was bought out for where's the price in here? $17.90 a share. We're currently at $17.65. So I don't think that this is going to be in play really at all, but it's just something to keep an eye on. This is a, a e-commerce reseller and it looks like that space is consolidating a little bit. Not terribly surprised to see that in the environment that we're in. Um, next here is going to be CNTB. This is another kind of a, uh, 
Penny Biopharma, we are above a dollar here, and we have a, a fairly decent range carved out already. Uh, so it looks like the high here, we have about 174, could even call that 175. And the low that we really want to hold here is 141, 140, currently at 143. Would love to see a move to clear out this formation here as high as 148. That's where it got stopped in the last time. And then I'd like to see the next leg up on a move through 150 towards the 160 handle. So that's what we're looking at today uh, as far as some of the uh, smaller cap plays. As always, we're, of course, going to watch the relative volume scanner, uh, and we're going to shout out any plays that we see, any potential setups that we see. So uh, I'll wait for Mitch to get back. I think that he's there. Uh, oh, hey, Mitch, there you are. So what do you have on watch for the group here today? So today's one of those days where it's a little bit tough, right? Because if you just want to look at what can go up, just look at what went up yesterday, right? I mean, if you just want to look at that, but there's a lot there, right? It's a lot under the sun yesterday. We had that risk off type of day, um, risk on type of day. And then all of a sudden you saw all the stocks just kind of get that little boost, right? Bear market rally. Now the question is, where do we rally to? I don't know what your idea was on the spy. I kind of missed that, but. 380 um, to 384, you have a couple of different resistance points. That's the yeah. first target. Yeah. If you can get up there, that's the 50% retracement move. Um, if you're trying to make a move back up towards that 384, 380s, that's that first move. The only thing that I would be careful was is a move right back below the 370. Because if we get that, then the next thing you know, we're right back into the range. Now, the question is, what will we get today, right? I think you just kind of keep watch of a couple of things. Keep watch on the dollar, right? If the dollar continues down, that's probably what we'll continue to see, right? A little bit of a rally. When the dollar catches a bounce, that's when I expect us to get that next down move. Right now, the dollar has been pulling back for the last five days, um, especially from that 114 high. And I'm looking at the DXY. So right now, that's been pulling on back. But there is a support right underneath it around the 110 and 109 areas. So this could eventually get a little bit of a bounce back. We'll continue to watch to see what happens. I think you watch Apple, right? If Apple can stay into the green, you will get that drive on up. I've been giving you guys a little bit more of the bogey outlook. Like for a while there, it was NVIDIA was leading the market. Now it's been all the Apple news that has been really kind of pushing this market. A lot of it based on the demand of the iPhone. Now we'll see if it can get a little push up. Another thing would be to watch is can Tesla come back and make fill in that gap zone. So if we have another positive day in the spy, I expect to kind of fill in the shadow or the window up. That'd be a move through 255 going towards 265. And we could definitely look for that if we get it. There's a, a shadow window right above it. Will we get that push today? Take a look at Tesla. If it gets into the red, heads towards the 240, not be a good outlook for the overall market. And of course, we did see some of these stocks get a little bit of a bounce back after some bottoming action. Microsoft being one of those also. Will it come back into the 241 or will it give us a two day move and really start pushing? We'll see what happens. Spy is doing what it usually does is pushes way too far in the pre market and the after hours so that by the time you get to the open, you have decisions to make on if you want to play these bullish plays again. Um, so it's already pretty extended on the day. We'll see what happens today if we can get continued push. And of course, why is this happening? Well, a lot of this is happening on that Australia uh, central bank notion that a smaller than expected 25 basis points came in, showing that they think that the Fed is going to come in lighter. Why do they think this? I think this is just money managers trying to lead to the upside trying to give you know some of the worries away from their investors. And it feels like a lot of the money managers are the ones that keep saying that the Fed will pivot quickly. And the big reason on this to me is that they want to meet their end of the year expectations. So if they could keep iterating that the market is just going to come back, they're hoping that it's going to come back so that they can make end of the year numbers and look like good money managers. Can you blame them on that outlook? I can't, but one thing I can blame them on is the sense of just optimism that is more hopey, hopium, uh, ism for me. And this is just hopium that we're just have this super optimistic outlook that the Fed is just going to pivot really quickly. It's not going to happen, guys. The Fed has said this like 10 times in a row. We are fighting inflation. We are fighting inflation. Yet people think that the Fed 
mandate is more along that they're just going to quickly pivot, right? That's not what they're saying. They're literally telling you that inflation is too high. That is the sign of concern for the Fed. And if you think about it, this is just going to give them more fuel. They got a PCE number that was what? It was hotter than expected. The, the exact number, the data point that the Fed looks at is higher than expected inflation. Do you think they're going to change tune? Nope, that's not what's going to happen in my eyes. I think we get another 75 basis point hike rate. So if you're in the camp that you don't see that, well, maybe you're thinking that this is the bottom. But I think eventually this is just a bear market rally again. I will give you guys that on average, these bear market rallies have been about 6 to 10%. And so somewhere in between that, you can take a look to see if this is one of those rallies. Is it just a little bit of a pop and drop? Or is it going to be one of those bear market rallies? If it is, 6% puts us right around the range that Ryan's talking about. So uh, just to kind of think about it in that sense, we could still get a little bit of a spike and then eventually downward action as okay. the Fed comes back in. Perfect setup, Mitch. By the way, we've got two minutes until the market opens here, so I'll be very, very quick. Uh, let me throw up my screen. We do have a piece of news here uh, that came out this morning. So according to Benzinga Pro here, uh, we have a quote here. Cantor Fitzgerald is now very bullish and conviction is very high. Eric Johnston, the head of equity and cross asset at the firm, said in an interview on CNBC Monday. Um, the analyst noted that the firm looks at the mark. Uh, that's just, sorry, I was looking for the quote. Quote, and we are seeing what we're are seeing right now is the following inflation real time is falling sharply johnson said adding that every single data point of inflation is falling month over month and has continued with rents and home prices falling as well he says goes on to say um we're a mere two months away from this fed hike cycle being over so what he's telling you is that the <laughs> fed, last fed hike is going to be on december 14th and i'll tell you this is that the market believes that and sniffs that out you are going to see some reversals here and maybe we do get a rally into the end of the year now i'm going to take this at face value i'm not going to take this as as this is what's going on this is just one uh opinion here that we're seeing this morning but it is worth noting um they're noting that we are going to have a sharp rally. One thing to watch for this, I think, is going to be some of the small caps. I think those are going to lead. If, if the market sniffs out that the rake heights are on pause or over, I think you're going to see small caps lead. That's something we'll take a look at. One thing that I will give you guys is that if you look at the biggest bull analyst in the Wall Street, all the biggest bulls, two of the biggest bulls in just this week – have flipped to the bear side, have flipped on their outlook for the market, not to, to that it's going to go further lower, but they're changing their, their year end guidance where they were like, oh yeah, we're going back to all time highs. They pulled it drastically down. And so what does that show me more and more that, yeah, you're going to get these people that just want to flip every time you get a bottoming market. Like I said, the fluff piece by the money managers trying to push up the market. But if you look at the bigger ones that have been making the bigger calls, even the bulls out there are starting to show some weakness like uh, Ray Dalio. Um, Ray Dalio, you guys can look him up on Twitter and see the comments that he's been making re recently. He was big bull, now starting to turn around a little bit. And a lot of that is inflation. Seems yeah, and, and and real quick, I see some discussion uh, here regarding the interest rates, which is exactly what I was hoping for. I think we should discuss that. Um, all I was doing was reading you a report from Cantor Fitzgerald's Eric Johnston. My view is that we do go lower here. I don't think 358 is going to be the low. I'm in the same camp as Tom, where uh, I think that you can short some of these pops, or if you bought the dip, maybe sell into them and lock in some of those gains. But again, I'm just bringing you what we see here, what people are saying out there. It's worth noting. It's worth noting, uh, you know, all of the different opinions, not just the one that you have. Uh, so, uh, yes, I have been to the store. I, I also, I, some of the food prices are down a little bit but for the most part. They're not at all. I think the numbers that he's referring to are the prints that we get, uh, on some of those, those data points. Anyway, uh, let's, let's see what we have here today. First move here on finger is down out of the open, which we kind of expected. Same with ATXI. BTB was up 116% in the pre-market, now up 145%. Again, this penny stock here, I'm just going to avoid it. Credit Suisse managing to be up 5% here today.
All right, taking a look at Apple. Apple is a down move out the gates here. We'll see what happens on Apple. If it keeps coming down, I think we'll start kind of leaking back here. But the SPY is making an up move right out the gates. We'll see what happens out there. Technology leading us, consumer cyclical, and then industrials behind that. What's on the downside? Energy, utilities. And then uh, basic materials is slightly up. I'm looking to see if we'll get a pullback in coal. Um, we need a bigger pullback here. Uh, hourly pullback is towards... Uh, 2650s. If we can go to 2650s, I'll start making me taking a look at BTU. I think BTU is a little bit too extended in my outlook, but we can take a look at maybe some laggard types of plays. CEIX is one that I've been talking about. METC is another one that's been lagging that could make a move up towards the 10 today. We'll see what happens there. Just going to keep my eyes on and kind of be patient here towards the open. I feel like lately I've been taking too many trades close towards that first 15 minutes. So let's wait a little bit and see if some of this uh, first 15 minutes can kind of balance out and we can see what's going on out there. Looks like the SPY is trying to make a new high there. The queues, what's going on? New highs trying to get through that pre-market resistance. Let's see what's going on there. And video will give you a good reading on that th up 3.5%. We'll see if this can continue making push. I definitely feel like if I am playing to the upside today, it would be quick moves. But let's see what happens. Speaking Nvidia of, definitely pushing. Speaking of quick moves, Mitch, ATXI really bouncing here. So that first move was down into a 14 handle. Uh, and now it's spiking here. Let me, sorry, I, I wanted to cover two stocks. I had the other stock up. So ATXI really running into that pre market level. Uh, watch this to heat up above what it looks 60, 1675 ish, maybe 1683 on your high print there. Jay Wild calling out sober. Uh, sober also having a good morning here. We're pushing up to that pre market high. That pre market high is several cents below the intraday high from yesterday. Now we have three different values here, but the, the value I'm really going to be watching here is 380. Sober looks like it's pulling back here. So we'll wait for this to set up here. I don't think this one is done yet. Uh, you might have some action here today. ATXI continuing its push here. We had a high print of, let's see here, high print of 1630. Uh, looks like it's going to try to push above that now. Stopping at 1630, just took it out. Looks like a little bit of a move higher. Remember, 1670, 1675 is supposed to be your next spot here, according to the pre market. This one's a little wild and a little spread for me. So, uh, might wait for this to tighten up. If it doesn't, might look elsewhere. Pullback coming now. Uh, Justin Zunaid is out this week, but he will be back. So, do not despair. We will send your Good feelings to him, I suppose. Sorry, I don't know where I was going with that one. We'll see what's going Amazon on. SE here. Solar getting a little bit of a lift, a lot of uh, lift in technology. That's kind of the leading sector here. Just looking at some tech trades to see if I was going to take anything. Right now, I'm, I'm not really seeing much that I want to grab. Maybe Unity would be one of those uh, just for the day kind of momentum trade back as this is bouncing off the 32s, coming back towards the 38s. Doesn't look like a bad one. If I wanted to trade maybe ARKK towards the upside, doesn't seem like a bad option just for right now in the time being. Um, but like I said, guys, I'm trying to be a little bit more patient here at the beginning and not trying to get into too many trades so that later in the day we can take some trades versus trying to push too much out the open here. Uh, folks, I have some breaking news here. Uh, Aaron Bryan loves options. I actually hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. But that's, that's to each his own, right? I mean, that's that's what it's all about, right? That's why uh in financial trading, uh you guys can do whatever you feel is in your cup of tea. Coinbase having a nice day here ex expected with Bitcoin actually on a push here too. 20,200 approaching here on Bitcoin. Looks like the high that was made, when was this? Three o'clock in the morning about. High here was just about 20,200. So it looks like that's on deck here. Justin says I trade them, but I hate them too. <laughs> yeah, it's a love-hate relationship with options. Love, no hate. question about that. Love, love hate. hate. <laughs> love it when they work, hate it when they don't. Yeah, they just never work for me, so I'd stay away. <laughs> stay hydrated, folks. Stay hydrated. Yeah, get your get your hydration on. And like always, uh, simply orange juice. <laughs> uh, Microsoft trying to make another push on up. So if you want to take a look at some of those stocks, like maybe Adobe, not a bad option, right? That's been a forgotten name that's beaten down. It does have a gap above it that it could try to fill. 
um, which would be a move towards the 300, then towards 310. Can it do that today? I don't think so just today, unless we're going to get a big rip in tech. But it is pushing today, Adobe. Oracle will move with those. Pan W, right? What about uh, cybersecurity stocks after they a pulled back a significant amount? Not a bad one. ERC, AERC pushing up towards its VWAP right now. Uh, so I got a, we got a VWAP here of uh, 421. Uh, we're right here at 420. So it looks like uh, AERC moving here. Some pretty decent volume to a little bit of a pullback. Not in this, but watching this. Would love for this to really kind of go back to this area, 450 area. Love it. What does this stock do? Creates us a one-hour support at the 390s. One hour support. Now you got to see it get back through the trend line. The trend line's a move through 440s. BTU pulling on back. I wanted to close the gap. Close the gap. Loves to close the gap and then take off. So I don't want to get into it when it's gapped up. SNTI broke above yesterday's intraday high. That briefly appeared here on the scanner. Um, before it reversed here. So SNTI above that 279 level, we've seen this one run in the past. Um, we seem to be running up into this resistance level. That's actually been some pretty strong resistance going all the way back to August. Um, worth noting here, next spots on SNTI, 317 and 336 there, if we can keep going. So we'll watch SNTI here as well. Taking a look at FCX, some copper action that had a nice move yesterday. It's right off the $30. We'll see what happens there. If we get another little spike up through the 30, 25, but it looks like it's going to fade, I think, uh, in a second. It's just trying to set up kind of that head and shoulders intraday pattern. Um, that would be a shoulder right here, a little wick towards 30, 15, and then it'll move right back down. We'll see what happens. I'm not going to. Like I said, I'm not going to overreact today. I'm waiting at least to 9.45, at least to 9.45. We still got about six minutes there. SPY is trying to make a new push towards 7.30, uh, 3.74s. Let's take a look at Apple. They turned back into the green. That's a good sign there. You're back into the green. Look to see if Apple does a VWAP bounce type of trade, holds the VWAP at 144.94, takes out one, uh, 146 on the upside. We'll see if that can get that nice little push there, Apple. AERC still holding on. AERC looks like it's trying to pop above that 420, 421 area. Um, we'll see if it can end up doing that. Oh, let me ban the porn bot here one sec. Yeah, they'd love to get it a little bit earlier. BTU, didn't you sell it four points lower? Which one, Jay? BTU, the stock BTU. I did it. I don't know if you met me. On BTU. I yeah, haven't been trading not, BTU sure. lately. No, speaking of coal, so I actually just saw something come across Twitter. Um, Stanley, uh, excuse me, Sankey Research tweeted the Shell CEO, quote, this quarter China grew coal production more than the entirety of Shell's global energy production. This quarter alone. Talked about it. Coal would come back, right? With a vengeance. It's come back. So, yeah, I don't think Cole's going anywhere. Uh, AERC broke above that 420. They pulled it right back down to it. But here we go. Let's see if we get some more lift off on a move through the 421 here. Quick little yank back to 416. Doses and mimosas. Doses and mimosas. OJ is just sugar. I like my sugar then. That's one of the reasons why I really like fresh squeezed orange juice. I feel like it's less sugar. I don't know the stats on that though. I might be wrong about that. It just depends if you get one that actually adds sugar. No, no, no. Uh, I'm talking about buying oranges and squeezing the juice out of them. Yeah. Um, now you, you see that wick that we just put in there on FCX. Let's look to see if we recover this and break through that 3015. If not, a rejection of 30 again could get me short down into this uh, gap zone. But copper has been popping lately, so I don't want to fight it. 
It just seems like it, it gapped up a little bit too much this morning. It's up there towards 30, and it was at 29.30s before this. We'll see what happens here. AERC is still struggling with this 420 area. They pop above it and then right beneath it. And then now it's kind of trading sideways here. Eventually, I think it's got to break out one of these directions. Here we go. Another move through 422 here. I actually have a high print of 425. So we'll see if they can get it above this. Grinding a little bit right now. Florida natural. You like that concentrate stuff, Daddy? No, thanks. I can't handle that concentrate stuff. The one that I really don't like is the Tropicina. Oh, my God. If you give me that, I'll give it back to you. <laughs> like, like if, if that's the Tropicana. only or yeah, Tropicana. If that's the only orange juice option, I will literally just give it back to you. I'll just be like, here, I'll just drink water. <laughs> Man, that the AERC just holding on. Stair That's what I'm saying. It really does look like it wants to pop above here. Um, it feels like it, but it's it's tough because every time it makes one of those breaks that would normally be an entry trigger, that just yank it. And if you see that a few times, it's going to make you hesitant to trade the actual break. Might be worth better. Buy, might be better off buying a pullback towards this VWAP. I've got it at four eleven here. So we'll see. Where's Zunaid? Zunaid will be out, guys. We mentioned this uh, a couple times, but if you didn't catch it, Zunaid will be out we'll, for the week. We'll get that. We'll get that question every day this week, Mitch. Yeah, I know. They don't hear the yellows. They want to hear that ding, ding, ding. The fire alarm. I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm not hearing the fire alarm. That's all right. I I miss you, Nate, as much as the next guy. But that fire alarm notification, man, that drives me insane. Uh, a lot of the oil stocks uh, trying to push, guys. Uh, Devin is one that I'd give you guys. Devin Energy trying to hold the 67 today, trying to push back up here. I don't know if you guys are still bullish on oil. I think that oil trade is tough, man, because it's all going to be dependent on what happens tomorrow from OPEC+. Plus. But of course, it could be a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of thing. We could have already gotten it priced in. Which we've seen before, yeah. Yeah, oil is one of those games that I can tell you right now. I started playing it this year a lot more, and I realized more and more why uh, <laughs> oil traders talk about the oil markets as being very manipulative. Let's just say that. Peloton at the highs. If any of you are feeling wild, no thanks for me. Apple testing lower. Here yeah, we go that's, on. Uh, that's AERC. why I'm a little concerned. Apple's going red and Spy is still in the green. We're getting to that 945. We could start seeing a flip. There's your AERC towards 426. Does it get through the resistance? Resistance is going into that 440s. That's where I think you could see a little bit of a pullback. You're going to maybe get a little pop here towards the 440s. Let's see if we take that to the next level. Looking at Gush to see if it's going to push on up here. Uh, let's go to, back to FCX. Still rejecting from that 3015 move. Hasn't really pushed out through there. We just put in the hangman candle. If you guys don't know what a hangman candle is, let's take a little learning lesson today. Um, and that would be what you see here on the spy. That's a hangman candle. It doesn't mean that things are going to change, but it does mean that there could be potential reversal. Of course, when you're looking at one candle patterns, it's not the highest probability to kind of come true here. But one thing that you do is when you see this candle, you're looking to see what the next candle is. If the body can close below it, then it would be kind of more uh, resemblant of a hangman, right? If it closes into the green above it, then it's really not what we're expecting to see. So let's see what happens here. And does this candle actually close into the green or does it just wick up here and then come right back towards 374? 
<laughs> oil is the widow maker. Yeah, it seems like it is late. Net gas is is the real widow maker. Net gas trades more volatile than oil. I guess just gas is the widow maker, man. Yeah, I, I guess we could we could reduce it. <laughs> right, <laughs> just take off the oil and take off the natural. Just gas. <laughs> my math, my math teacher would be proud that I just said that. My former math teacher. So there you go. I see you. If the candle is green, is it still a hangman? Yes, it's a hangman candle, but that doesn't mean that it's going to turn around. That's why hangmans give you signs that potentially things can turn around. Doesn't always mean that it's going to work. Just like a hammer candle on the downside doesn't always mean you're going to get a pop up. It's something to look out for. Oil and cold. Yep, those are your those are your winter makers. Just watching this. Those levered those levered natural gas ETFs, man, those are wild. Donkey Kong, Mitch, sixteen forty five here on Donkey Kong. And AERC still grinding higher here, trying to make a move towards this four thirty. Right. Currently at four twenty eight on the ask. They're taking it out here. But one thing you're getting on there is higher lows, higher lows. If that trend can continue, then we'll just watch for that trend to continue. That's what you're getting there in AERC. Not a bad move there today. No, not at all. And, and I know it's been back and forth, um, but it's actually been kind of a, a slower grind here. If your entry is good, this is actually pretty tradable here today. Bad entry might cause you to get shaken out. Uh, if you're having some tight stops, but otherwise, this has really been a, a good grinder here through the uh, through the VWAP. Fighting myself not to get short FCX early. I need to see it crack down below the VWAP. There's no point in shorting above VWAP. That's what I've, one thing that I've always tried to learn and told myself that when you're shorting above VWAP, that's just always trouble, right? The VWAP a lot of times is going to represent bullish and bearish for the day. It's kind of like the 200 day SMA on a daily candle, right? And so a lot of times I try to respect myself and not short above VWAP, wait for it to break VWAP. That give me the sign that it wants to go down, then maybe get into it. Yeah, I mean, Mitch, you should always respect yourself, number one. But the thing about that VWAP short trade, when you, <laughs> short it, when you short it above the VWAP, some of the, one, one of the things that will happen is you'll see the stock price start to fall. And, and it'll look like your short's working out. And then when it gets to the view app, it bounces. Boom. It bounces and you get ferociously enough. And yeah. there are enough shorts that are front running that, that then it becomes a race to cover on that pop up. Exactly. There's a, their pullback for e -R -E -A -E -R -C. A -E -R -C. I don't know why I can't even say that ticker today, but, but this, I like the VWAP pullback. VWAP pullback so the, just needs to hold forward. And, and I'm with you there, Mitch. This was the pullback that that the reason that you get shaken out and trying to play some of these pops here is because you don't want to sit through this pullback. But now that it's happening, you're absolutely right. We're watching this pullback to the VWAP here. Let's see where it settles. You might get another opportunity. Remember, this first move up was a push off the VWAP as well. 10 seconds on that spy candle. It looks like the hangman not holding on here. We'll see what happens. I don't think it's going to change here in the 10 seconds. Let's look for the next candle opens. Do we just get a quick washout to 374 or that kind of push towards 376? If you get that 376, you're going to probably start looking to see Apple flip right back into the green here. Look at Apple trying to make it to move back up. You see how that's just kind of barcoding right now between 144 and 144 30s let's say um let's see if this can get above that and really push a lot of that's going to depend on the overall market fighting trying to hold on here let's see what happens there's fcx finally getting back below the vwap there i'm going to go ahead and go short here just grab that um just grabbed it at oh that 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 was a little mistake there if you if... <laughs> Yeah, let me fix this mistake and then get out and I'll tell you guys what I just did there. Um, I didn't change my order form there and I actually just shorted the spy there for a second. <laughs> and I covered immediately. That could be a problem there, guys. Um, whew, good, good, gl glad I caught that really quickly. Let me see if I can get to FCX now correctly here. Um, did you fat finger a position size there? Sorry, I was. Oh, yeah. It. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, we won't, we won't talk about that because I covered it into the green. 
<laughs> but okay, uh, so so you took a mistake and you ended up turning it around. That's that's worth it, it right there. It, well, one of the things is as soon as I saw it, you guys saw my deer in headlights eyes, and I see immediately went to cover. I was like, no, 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 not what I was trying to do here. Um, but yeah, yeah, um, we'll see what happens there. Um, now, now I'm looking at FCX. It just ticked slightly above the VWAP, so we'll see right now. This is the last rejection. The rule of three is going to come into play if it can't get up here. AERC, nice little VWAP bounce there, right? I mean, if what you got in a VWAP, 412. What were you just saying about wanting to pull that to the VWAP, Mitch? You yeah. called it right when it happened. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad one there. Not a bad attempt there. Let's see what happens here. FCX, rejection of 3015. If it breaks through 3020, you're going to get that expansion. What's going on with IMVT? I am immune event shares are trading lower after the company prices 70 million, 75 million underwritten offering of common stock. It's ripping here post offering. Yeah, jolts coming in at 10 a.m. We'll see what happens there at 10 a.m. Definitely. We'll keep an eye out for the jolts. Appreciate you keeping a, a, an eye out for us there. Easy, Mike. I know that you're looking at it also. We'll see what happens. Yeah, Jesse, sometimes you just got to learn the lesson. One thing I'll always tell you guys is when I make those mistakes, because even myself that has been trading for years sometimes makes some mistakes here. And I, I want to let you guys know that you're never going to be perfect. One thing that I try to do whenever I make a mistake, especially in ordering, I just quickly cover. That's what I've learned or quickly sell the position. Because if you're not trying to get into that position and you made a mistake in the ordering, you don't just go and say, oh, let's see what happens, the probability, this chance to see what's going to happen. What I do on those moments, I've learned, just, just get out. You always have that ability as a trader. You always have the ability to do what? Go back to nothing. Just break even, get out of the positions. Go flat. Not a, go flat. You always have that option. And I think that sometimes traders forget this option when they make a mistake. They're like, no, uh, uh, now let, let me see if it goes into the green for a second. Especially if you fat finger, that's when it can get really troublesome, right? I mean, what I've done when I fat finger is just get out. Just, I'd rather get out. Even if it's a small loss, I, I went down a couple of cents there. I would rather go a couple of cents than have frozen at that moment of indecision. And then next thing you know, you have a big loser on your error of execution. The uh, cruise ships are bouncing today. Good luck if you play them. Just going to pass on that. Buy is turning around there from the 376 level. Now pulling back, but not pulling back fast enough to make me think that we're just going to completely flip. But Apple's giving me that sign that we're flipping now. Look at Apple starting to take out the lows. Let's see what happens there as we're starting to see Apple turn around here. Let's take a look at the cues to maybe start leading down also. Uh, NVIDIA, will that turn back towards the red? You see it crack through the VWAP and now pulling on back. Let's see what happens here. Uh, one thing I'm seeing here off of the unusual options, CIM, ticker CIM, had an unusual option print here, right? We had the $6 calls that expire November 18th. About 5,000 of them spent 200 k on that trade. As soon as that trade crossed here, it started to pop up. So what I would say is for a potential trade here, first of all, we've got some sweeps already, which means if you see repeat sweeps, especially ones at the same strike, that would be something to to consider but this 567 area looks like if this pops we might have a trade on here i'm going to watch this not in it right now but going to watch it those sweeps are, are telling me there's some interest here maybe something's going on big volume stick here too on the equity nvidia coming down fast there apple we'll see if it makes a new low but the spy starting to turn around there it gives me a little bit of, of signs that we could see a little bit of a swing down here Going to take a look at maybe like a Sark to see if that's starting to reverse there. It is reversing there. We could look at the Sox S trade, but I tried that yesterday and I tried it too early, I feel like. So I'm going to wait at least till the 10 o'clock to get back to VWAP. Normally, I sometimes play what's called the mean reversion trade, which is the bottom of the range to the VWAP. That's how I would normally approach the Sox S trade here. But I'm going to be a little bit more patient. I want to see it start coming back towards the VWAP, and then we can play it back towards the opening range. We'll see what happens if the SPY actually starts to cut down. If not, we should get that extension on up and we can go scooping maybe an apple that has been really kind of uh, giving us a nice level to risk off of, which is the 144.75.
Uh, JD Chance saying, not always, and this is in reference to the always being able to buy something back. Some might have the dreaded pattern day trader rule and can't get out after the third day trade of the week. The one, This is correct, but the one thing that I want to stress here is that when you are operating under the pattern day trader rule, you really want to make sure that your plan takes that into account. So your third day trade, when I used to deal with this, uh, by the way, CIM popping here now, um, when I used to deal with this, I would keep that last day trade as kind of a, oh shit, I need to, I need to get out of this, right? And I would try to yes. be a little bit more tactical about them. So, so even in that case, you can still plan around that. Don't necessarily be too aggressive. Again, we've also talked about some of your other options, like splitting your money into another account or perhaps getting a cash account to increase the amount of day trades that you can make. But just wanted to throw that out there. One more, uh, Brandon, how are your allergies today, Ryan? Mine are bad this morning. You know what? Mine are better today. You know what I did yesterday after work is I went around and I cleaned everything. I took my Dyson. I, I, it was crazy. I, took, I, I must have vacuumed my entire place yesterday. Um, I also took the, the crevice tool and I cleaned out a bunch of my vents. And I also put a new filter in my furnace. Um, and it seems to have an effect. Maybe it's just luck of the draw on the day, but I definitely seem like it's uh, it's not as bad today. Appreciate you asking about that, though. Gilead, not looking too bad here. Uh, healthcare, not looking too bad today. There is getting a little bit of a lift. Gilead is one that had some news out there, had a rating upgrade from JP Morgan. Keeping an eye out on Gilead. I've, I've traded this multiple times in the last kind of two months. And I just feel like the monthly chart is one of my favorite charts to see, at least bullish wise, it is one of the prettiest charts out there. But it's also a chart that hasn't gone anywhere in years. So it's kind of more of these kind of long term uh, patterns that maybe one day will give you a breakout. But that's why I look at it, because at least technically wise, it makes sense. Now the story needs to make sense. So look at it on the quarterly outlook. Look how this is so symmetrical. A move back above 75 could really get a nice little breakout towards 85. So that's why I'm keeping it on watch. And I think that these are some that you definitely want to watch. They give good dividends. And so maybe these are going to be some that uh, traders take their shots on as they're looking for GARP opportunities. And real quick, just to kind of touch on one of the stocks that we talked about earlier, SNTI. This is one that we've traded several times here on the show. Uh, we did break above that 293 level. It uh, is actually more like a 290 to 293 area than a specific level. But here we are in the next leg up. So one of the things that I would watch for, I'd like actually like to see this pattern repeat if possible. If we get a little bit of sideways trading and we're able to hold, I'd love to see a, a move up. Uh, we're yanking back here. Let's see where we actually yank to and where this finishes. How's Mara doing? How are these? Okay, Bitcoin names are at highs today. That that makes a lot of sense with Bitcoin being where it's at. I right, doing the same thing. Oh, sorry, I was. All right, taking a shot here, chart. guys. Taking a shot on Tesla. Tesla long here. Uh, 2011, 2011, the risk is going to be down towards tw uh, 249.38. So trying to give myself a little bit of room. Maybe should give myself the 249. I have a small little shares right now. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of room. Let's go towards 249.13 where we have some wicks. I'll show you guys the trade right now. We're looking for the move back above. And a lot of this is because the SPY stayed up. Remember I talked to you guys. Would the SPY make that 360, uh, 376 level? It started pushing and I saw Apple kind of balancing. I couldn't get Apple because it was already above the VWAP, but Tesla was one that I was going to look for. And look at that first move. We're already getting here and Tesla not looking too bad. I'll look to add at VWAP, but right now let's let, let's let this drive up. It's looking good. Good morning, Shelly. Zuneid is off this week and Buddy is sleeping on my bed. He is, he took my blankets and made a king of the hill and kind of laid on top of it. So I couldn't make it this morning. So that's where he is right now. All right, we're now we're up about dollar uh, fifty already on Tesla. Let's see if we can get through the two fifty two area. If that happens, we'll get probably up towards the two fifty three. Remember, I'm looking at maybe potentially getting up towards that yesterday's high. Two fifty five would be the first kind of level to maybe look for profits. If we can keep running on the spy, maybe we close this gap above. We'll see what happens today.
DXY, Jay's calling out. Let me take a look at DXY. How are we doing on that? Dollar still going down? Yep, dollar is still going down, still showing a little bit of weakness. Uh, 10 a.m. number, jolts. What are we getting on the jolts? Let's take, let's try to catch that. Uh, good question, Gary. Uh, I hope that it can. Um, I, I am expecting some news in the next week or two here, so hopefully that also helps push it, but we'll see. Your Tesla move still looking good here, Mitch. Yeah, I'm trying to catch these jolts numbers for us um jolts coming in at 10.05 uh 10.05 million versus 10.77 estimated so came in light on the jolts opening is that a bullish move yes would be a bullish market move, likes right? it yeah it's a, it's a bullish why because the job openings have to come down for us to even think that the unemployment number is going to go up so at least it's a bullish sense move on the number that is out right now. I'll give you guys the number right now. I'll put it at the bottom here as a banner so you guys can check that out. Also, make your own investment decisions off of it. But it looks like the SPY is pushing. I'm standing in this Tesla trade. Can we get through the 252s, 250? 252.50s, 70s, getting on up towards the 255 is what I want to be looking at. And of course, that would be a big move up. Let's see if we can actually close above this trend line that I have here. This pop looking pretty good here. Um, Apple highs, Tyson highs, Square highs, Amazon highs, Bitcoin highs. Yeah, the jolts number helping it out here. Sure it definitely did. didn't hurt it. Sure did, Mitch. All right, Mitch, I'm going to run to the washroom real quick. I'll be right back. Go for it, my friend. I'll just keep going here. I'll take a look at the comments out there. What's going on? UDN trade. Uh, we put on a TLT trade and a UDN trade and people laughed. Yeah, sell the dollar now rotated to gold. Yep. And you could also be doing the silver trade, right? PAAS. I've been talking about this. This isn't silver going to take off, guys. This is the dollar. The dollar has been affecting this. And uh, gold hasn't, hasn't been a bad trade either. Look at that GOLD. Been a... Big rip on up. So not bad trades there, easy. Sometimes the smaller trades like that TLT and that UDN, uh, not a bad move. I mean, you're still making money, right? Sometimes it's not the sexiest trades. Sometimes the non-sexy trades make some really good profits. So we'll see what happens here. Now Tesla really starting to push on up towards the 252.02s now. Let's see if we can continue driving on up. We're getting towards resistance, so we could see some selling run into here around the 252s. So let's see what happens now. Do do. All right, Tesla. What are you gonna do there? I'm gonna take that next leg. What's going on? All right. All right, let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the sectors on out there. Let's see what's going and performing on the day. We take a look here. Tesla's can, trying to continue to run through the 252. Technology leading the way today. Real estate behind that. Then you got financial services. So take a look at some of the banks today. Those have been doing well. JPM having a really good day up 4%. Bank of America 4%. Uh, Citigroup up 4%. So a lot of these banks getting the nice lift today. So if you're taking a look at what is strong, definitely some relative strength in some banks' names today. Energy back into the green also. So oil on the rise here, even though we're getting – the market to come up that's interesting you know one of the things that i've been seeing is the market has been actually going down with the oil moves and they're actually getting more correlated with the overall action for a little while there it was the opposite move but oil not looking too bad here gush trying to get back through the highs we'll see if that can do it oxy uh trying to get back through 65 80s going up to 66 we'll see if it can make that move spy overall now towards 376 50s turned around a little bit from the 377 now let's take a look at Apple. Did that take a new high in the pre-market? Well, it's trying to. It's going to trying to get through the 146.07. We'll see if it can make that push. Um, 
Easy Mike, uh, money SOXL at 1102. Okay. The SOXL, that great trade here, that is the high print on the day. Um, if you're in that, I'd love to know what the entry trigger was on SOXL for you. Uh, that would be really helpful. Real quick, Jim is saying volume is low on the spy. Jim, that I get the same the same reading here. We currently have volume of about 18 and a half million. The average 10 day volume is 76 and a half million. So we're a ways away from that. We'll see where, if we end up closing that gap. But I wouldn't be surprised. Yesterday, the volume was very low too. All right, getting ready to put out a half sell order. If we can get through this 254 mark again for Tesla, I missed that last little spike to 254.50. Probably would have taken at least half of it off there. I'm going to look to take some a little bit above that level if we could break through that right now. And then we'll be looking for 255 up next. I'm not actually going to take some off there. I'll look for it to actually get into the gap zone. But I do want to take some into around the 255 range because that's already a great trade on the day. Let's see what happens. Tesla, how are those uh, cheaper plays doing today? That AERC is uh, hanging out there. Did do that nice VWAP bounce. That was a nice um, VWAP bounce there. This is interesting discussion right here. Uh, Stonk Peachy saying, Fed pivot rate rate hikes talk with bad unemployments. I am deciphering this because I'm not sure what this, exactly what they're saying. And I don't want to. Uh, speak for you. But it, I, I think part of the wonder here is with the, uh, the Australian news today, not raising rates as much as anticipated. I think the thought here is, does that bleed into other markets, right? So does that actually come over here? Like, for example, are we going to get less than a 75% rate hike next meeting or the final meeting before the end of the year? That's the thought. I don't know what the answer is. I personally don't think so. Um, but that's the thought here. And that that could be why we're trading up here, or that could be contributing to why we're trading up here. Uh, now we're getting that struggle. Wouldn't you know it? Uh, Spy starting to top out a little bit there and starting to come down here, showing me that uh, missed that little spike there in Tesla is a little bit of annoying. Um, it was a quick spike. It was only on one minute candle where it went to that 254.50. Looking for another little spike to get some out here as we're already above the trend line and above the highs. But want to give it that one little motion to really start driving through here. Remember, Tesla went down big yesterday. So relative, this is still a small move there for Tesla after a big down day yesterday. Uh, Jay Wild, NCRA, little pop. Uh, good call here on NCRA. I'm looking at this. We did pop here. This is this is an interesting one. Um, VIE, Mixon International Food Development, entering a distribution agreement with Farmers Vending Machine um worth a million bucks so we do have a pr here not sure the significance of this pr market likes it though we're definitely trading up here i don't have any read on this uh, i'd be looking for this to make a move towards four 240 excuse me how how thin is this stock let's see four million floats so a low float stock has traded a million shares today on average it only trades about sixty-seven thousand. so uh ncra seems to be moving here today Wissing, you want to take a look at AVCT. Hopping here up to 250. You know, interesting here on AVCT, a break above this 250 to 252 area might get some juice. Good spot. Good spot, Wissing. God, your name, man. That's just, it's so weird saying that. <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, I don't want to disrespect the guy, but goodness. Mara is at the highs here. I think that's the case with all of the Bitcoin names, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when the market goes up, those go up too. Well, I mean, look at Bitcoin too. High correlated with the market right now. SNTI starting to move to clear out this pullback area i wouldn't be surprised if highs are on deck here all right tesla trying to make it that move got to 253.69 let's see if we can get through that now spy trying to give you that green candle here on the three minute let's see if we can get through 377 in the spy take out the 254.50 here above on tesla 
then I'll look to take some profit and then try to get a last little extension. If we can't get it, we'll just run to it, take some profit and run. In this market, you got to take your chance to take some profit and run. Take the money and run. SMTI pulled back to that buy-in spot. If I can get some here at 305, might try it here. Tight stop, 296. Not in it yet. Still watching SMTI here. feel like I was a tad late to this. So again, I want to make sure I play my setup. And if I miss it, I miss it. <laughs> All right. Not a bad day today for the bulls out there. The bulls taking charge. Taking charge. In this bear market rally here, we're seeing dead cats bouncing all around. <laughs> they got nine lives, don't they? Buddy, I can tell you that Buddy used up one of his already. When he was a, <laughs> when he was a young cat, he chased a squirrel up into a tree and gave absolutely zero thought about how he was going to get out of said tree. It was 98 <laughs> degrees. It was humid. Stood there with a ladder. It's, it was it was a big mess. Finally, he, he came down. All right, Tesla getting that spike Yo. to spy, trying to get that push there. I'm going to go ahead and try to take some profits out into that. Uh, but Eric, that sounds like a better move than even I am. So we could celebrate Eric's birthday and killing it on the day. Eric. Go ahead and give yourself a nice birthday gift if you went ahead and nailed that. You got to go ahead and reward yourself, my friend. All right, Eric. selling out a little bit here of Tesla. Let me try to get some out there. Eric got is a be Eric is a Benzinga regular. He is a happy hour regular. Eric, happy birthday to you. I know you had a great day yesterday. You, you always do a good job of outlining your trades and telling us what you're trading. Really appreciate it. The man that has worked every job out there, Eric, happy birthday, man. Make sure you get yourself a steak. Have something to drink with that. Happy birthday, dude. Happy birthday, indeed. Uh, taking some Tesla out there. Went from the 250.11 to 254.33. Can't be mad about that. Now let's see if we take off to 255 here. SPY slowing down a little bit, so keeping that in mind. And that's why I'm taking some profit here. If the SPY could take another leg up, well, then I can keep going with the party. If the SPY wants to take a leg down and come back to VWAP, I'm not going to be a part of that one. Happy birthday, Eric, indeed. Wish you the best, Eric. And one of the things is, if, if it is your birthday and you're able to nail like that, one of the things that I would say is, you know, ride that high. Go have a good birthday, you know. <laughs> go go celebrate. Uh, Jay Rice, a reminder for everyone here in the group, and I think a timely one, rallies in bear markets can be fierce. And this is another reason why shorting can be difficult, especially if you're accustomed and practiced to trading to the long side. When you suddenly flip short, if you don't know what to look for, or you don't know what to expect, you can very easily be flushed out of your short positions. It's not as easy as just flipping the charts over and everything's going to be fine. It doesn't work that easily. Jay Rice, absolutely right here. Rallies and bear markets can be fierce. If you're short, be careful. Uh, but otherwise, just be mindful of what's going on here. Robert, we like to hear that you like this room. Welcome. Oh, yeah. Hopefully Welcome, this won't be the last time that you're here. We hope to see you back. Thanks Definitely for do us Welcome. a favor, Robert. Hit the subscribe button down below. You can be notified the moment we go live. We do there this every single day. And uh, one thing I want to say is we do kind of answer questions. So if you got questions, Robert, and maybe you're a new trader, throw them up in the chat. That's what we're here for also. Like question here from Chris Woods. I saw you mention it a little bit earlier. I was just trying to focus on my Tesla trade here, and I still need to focus on it. But I'll give you guys a chance to get that answer in. And so this is about the 50% retracement. And so there's two areas that I will call out. Not only 50%. 50% is more what you'll see from Joel and Dennis. They love the 50% retracement. I'm more also in the camp of the fibs. And so I'll call out the golden mean, which is 61.8. Somewhere between the 50 and the 61.8, I think there's a sweet spot there. Of course, sometimes you're going to have to wait to get, get it down towards 61.8. Sometimes it's going to find the bounce around the 50%. I look for the usually a little cut through that 50% and I'm using that 61.8 
as kind of like the down move that it can go to. So a lot of times I'll try to size in between there, but that's not what it's really about. What your question is, is on the time frame. Time frame is going to be more on the daily outlook. So I would use those 50% retracements only on the daily outlook like this on the spot. So you can see here, that's this line here. So I'm drawing it from the top of the move, the recent top of the move, which was up there towards 410 to the bottom of the move down towards four, uh, 357, 18, right? Or you can look at it in a different sense. Uh, maybe it's the 357.04. And then you look at the 50%. 50% has it right up here towards 384. And then where is the 61.8? Well, the 61.8 is up there towards the 390. Okay. And so you, what they're looking at is a 50% coming back towards 384. So somewhere between there is what they think they can get towards the 382, 384 range. That's what they're looking at. A lot of this is on the daily candle, not intraday. They're not really using this on like, let's say a 15 minute. They're not using that. It's more, more on the daily candle. Uh, real quick, Balo says, uh, not a trader yet, but learning a lot from you. Tried to start investing at the wrong time, but making money slowly during these rallies. So a couple of things. First of all, um, great idea practicing and learning first before putting your real money on the line. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't do enough of that when I started. I blew up my first two accounts. I did learn some very valuable lessons for that from that, but I feel like maybe some of that could have been avoided if I was just a little bit more disciplined. So good, good job on your strategy there. There was never a wrong time to start investing. Um, investing is a, is a lifelong learning process. Investments change, evolve, um, they do all of those things. So as long as you are investing in your own financial well-being, you're already doing the right thing. Key here is that not everything that you do is going to work. Not everything that you do is going to be correct. So it's going to be imperative that you learn how to identify what's working and what's not. Keep your losses small and your gains higher. And over time, that money will build on itself. Uh, I always say nobody cares more about your money than you do. So by learning this and being able to manage your own finances, you really put yourself in a good position to uh, build your own wealth. So welcome here. Um, don't don't worry about going slow either. The the I see a lot of people get involved in this game because they want to make a lot of money fast. It ends up not working. And they get spit out the back. Be happy with slow gains. Gains are gains. Yeah, one thing to understand is that this is not going to be That's something MTI, you, man. you get in one day. And it's not going to be something you get in one week. It's something that you have to understand that if this is what you're going to do for the long run, think about it in that sense, right? Always try to work skills that you can start improving on. Uh, find ways to improve. There's different areas of finance, right? There's technicals, there's fundamentals, there's understanding story, there's studying, understanding economic data, or maybe you have um, a service that can help you with that economic understanding. There's a lot to learn in the finance industry, and it's not going to be a one day kind of thing. Yep. And uh, real quick, got to talk about it because we set the trade up before it happened. Got to talk about it. Got to talk about it. Got to talk about it. SNTI, we've known from previous shows and previous sessions that this is a potential runner. This thing can pop hard. This thing can really can behave well if it gets uh, any type of volume. Looking at the volume here today looks great, especially when compared to yesterday. We had a really, really great move here. So first move out of the gate trades right into this 280 to 290 area where we kind of consolidate for a little bit. We break out of there by breaking above this 291 area, 291 to 293. That gave you a trade. Uh, as we pushed up to the new high, we noted it at 314. We retraced. Mitch just give you a, gave you a lesson on uh, how to watch retracements. We retraced some of this move. Completely normal behavior, especially for a stock that's pushing into a new range. And as we trade back up towards that high, sure enough, when we take out that high, we get elevated volume. We get an elevated pop. This is your second trade. Two excellent opportunities here on SNTI. The second one was better than the first. The first one should have put it on your radar. So again, if you took the trade here at, at, at 314, normally on these types of pops, I'm only looking for 10, 15 cents. We're 13, 14, 15 cents above that right now. Trim and trail here, see if it sets up again. This type of move, we're going to watch all the time. We're going to try to trade these. You can do them even in, in tapes that are not good. Um, 
Just a te textbook move here on SNTI. SPY topping out here. I'm about to sell the rest of the Tesla. As I'm seeing the SPY top out there at the 376.86. I'm just trying to see if, the, if it's going to break through the 376 level. It's an important recovery if it could recover the 376 and go back towards 377. So I'm giving it a second to see if the SPY can crack here. You can see it right here. Uh, it's been fighting that 376, 377 level. If it breaks through that 376, you're probably going to get the VWAP move. Yeah, I'm not liking this move, this action here. And Tesla's a little bit leading towards the SPY action there. So I'm just going to take the last little bit off there. Just took it on Tesla. Um, not a bad little trade there. We did ride it up towards this. Got some profit out here. And then we were looking for another extension towards the gap zone. But it's not happening right now. It's going to go ahead and take the trade off there. We got out at 252.52. So uh, right in between here. Got that last little bit out there. Not a bad trade to start the day. And at least we're green. We're bouncing back. Let's go ahead. Let's see if we can get one, maybe one or two more trades in on the day. And now the SPY is starting to turn around, right? And so just be careful on out there. I'm starting to see some top out in the SPY. Does it mean it's going to go completely reverse into the red? Doesn't mean that. But we are seeing a little bit of slowdown. Apple, what's going on there? A little bit of a turnaround from the 146 level. Now let's start taking a look at maybe some tech names. NVIDIA turning around from the 13075s. It looks like we've had at least the first move on the day. Now let's see if we get an actual reversal back down. All right, Mitch, you want to see uh, Bobby Wags? Bobby see, Wags? You want to see the tackle of the night yesterday? Oh, let's, let's see. Let's see. All right. So just to kind of go back to my PSA here when we, uh, when we opened up the show, um, I cannot stress enough how bad of an idea it is to run onto the field of any sporting event. Just don't do it. Don't try to be that guy. Um, this doesn't happen all of the time, but I wish it would start happening more because I think it would act as a deterrent. Look how bad of an evening this guy had. Run, run. Oh, boom. We'll watch it one more time because the hit's just so good. And I think what I like the most here. So the guy is completely defenseless. By the way, credit to Field Yates for, for showing us this video. The guy is completely defenseless. And Bobby Wagner still has the wherewithal to move his head out of the way. Tackles clean, puts a shoulder right into him. Just blows him up, stops the streaker. That was the tackle of the night. I would say I I have no problem dealing with security. I have no problem dealing with um, maybe an officer trying to tackle me. But when a football player lays a hit on you, an NFL player, you don't want that. Might not be the best thing to do this in football. Maybe maybe a little soccer, you know, the kicking, you know. I don't see them trying to take you out. But I'll tell you right now, even in soccer, there's some big defenders out there that could take you down in a heartbeat. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll see what happens. Helmet to head, multi-million dollar lawsuit. Yeah, but you, you, you remember, there's a... There's a, a rule when you buy a ticket, an NFL ticket, that you can't go onto the field. I was going to say, I believe you're trespassing at that point. Yeah, so um, he kind of can lay down the smackdown on you and get away with it. <laughs> you know, he brings up an interesting point. I do want to see uh, how that actually plays out in the courts if it does go there. Um, but realistically, the, the only one guy is at fault, and it's the idiot man. Yeah, don't don't you get banned for life if you do stuff like that? Yeah, not not what you want to be doing. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you the thing is, don't run to the sideline. Like I heard someone say, don't run to the sideline. That's a football player. <laughs> we'll, I ain't running over there. He will feel that hit for weeks. Yeah, Leslie. Yeah, he will. Yeah, oh, he, he woke up in jail today, and let's just say he's not feeling comfortable. <laughs> Anyway, all good right, for Spy a, slowing for a down a little laugh. bit. Yeah, Spy slowing down a little bit. Start coming back. Remember, we talked about potentially playing what? I usually play the mean reversal trade, right? Which is success back towards the mean, or maybe Sark. If you're seeing Sark, it's back towards the mean, right? That's usually the reversal style play. 
Now I want to see if we actually get the reversal of the bearish pattern, right? And so that's a crack through here going back towards 5850s. Let's Tesla see what happens might, there on Sark. Tesla might be curling and making a move back towards the highs here too. Yeah, it did. It did try to hold on there to yeah. 252 pullback. I'm already out of the trade, so maybe if you guys want to stay around, that's always up to you. Tesla is not a bad one to take a look at, right? But the SPY is starting to slow down a little bit. That's the only sign of concern for me. Yeah, SPY is taking a break here. Now, it's not immediately reversing, which I think is great, I mean, for, for long side traders here. Yes. Uh, it's, not, it's not immediately reversing, but it is definitely slowing down a little bit here. Uh, BRB. Around. Let me check the Twitter streets and see if anything interesting is going on out there. Oh, Mitch left. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have given you all this dead air if I had realized that that's going on here. Just wanted to check and see if I see anything else out there. Not seeing anything new, really. New issues here. Um, SNTI approaching the uh, high of day. Maybe we'll get another pop here. Yep, just put in a new one. Popped above that 344. I have a high print of 349 here. Not in SNTI anymore, though. That's going for more. It wasn't waiting for me. It was going to go for more anyway. Nice job, Christopher, on your trade. Took profits and out for the day. Amazon, MPW, HD, and Adobe. Those are several of those stocks we've talked about recently. Might jump back in later on the SQQQ. We get an anticipated afternoon dip. Volume is super low. Nice job so far on your trade plan, Chris. Nice executing. CIM is finally going, says SWC. CIM, remember we had those sweeps there, right? We had, oops, did, I did not mean to do that. Hit the back button on the <gasps> browser. No, no, no. Don't worry. Don't worry. Your screen's here. All right. Now time to determine what's going to happen here in the SPY. I don't want to be trying to play the opposite contrarian type of play if the SPY is not going to crack. So if it doesn't crack 376, there's no point in me playing to the downside. It would be more looking for stuff that's pulling back to VWAP and finding some bounce like AMD, NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA is not even cracking. It's really not even cracking. AMD would be more of that kind of reversal style back up. Um, so let's see what happens here. Does the SPY take out the 376.86 on the upside? AMD could be one to maybe take a look at. That's that's one that I'm looking at right now. Problem with AMD is the, the kind of quick movement that you get in AMD. It's a hard trade, I think. AMD is a little bit harder than most people think. It has a tendency of moving really quickly about 17, 20 cents. That makes a big difference. Tesla trying to come back up towards that 254. What's going on in the energy? What's up with our uh, gush? We gushing yet? Uh, slowing down a little bit that oil trade. Uh, Clyde is asking, what is going on with Netflix? Uh, I don't see any news here on Netflix. I didn't notice any unusual options. Netflix really struggling today on a day where the market is just Ooh. really strong. Netflix pounding the lows here, 235 on the dot. Uh, yeah, let me looks... know if anyone finds anything out about Netflix. I don't see any news for it. It's something that's maybe not... Uh, just like a given. And so look for maybe some show numbers or something like that being out or something that I would be looking for. Yeah, if anyone has that, um, let's let our friend Clyde here know what's going on. I'd be looking for some news like that. Not saying that it's out there, but just saying like that's what I think it could be. You know, one thing is I, I follow so much headlines every single day. I kind of see the movement. I'm starting to get to the point where Certain headlines almost make sense for the amount of down that a stock is or amount yeah. up that a stock is. Um, Robert Butler, um, go ahead and email Jonathan at Benzinga.com. That's one of my teammates here. Uh, he's part of the onboarding team. He should be able to take care of any questions that you have. So welcome to the family. 
go ahead and email Jonathan and he should take it away. How did that copper trade turn out? FCX, yeah, it actually pushed up. Glad I didn't get into that one. It did push up there. I saw the hold on FCX today. Steel holding up today. Interesting. The last two days, big pushes on up in steel. Consumer cyclical trying to hang on. These are like the Royal Caribbean and stuff like that. Getting a nice little pop up today. Royal Caribbean hanging on here. All of the boats. Norwegian yeah, too and Carnival as well. They're all moving together. You know, one thing I noticed in the region announced yesterday is they said, you know what? We'll let everybody on our boat now. We don't care about no vaccinations. They tried the last little resort to get everybody back. Well, those those mandates are falling all across the globe. Yeah, they are. That's for sure. Paramart uh, Global downgraded. No, that wouldn't help out Netflix that much. Or that wouldn't take down Netflix like that. Aaron, you're looking for a way to make money when the SPY is in a sideways pattern. I guess, couldn't you just sell upside calls? If you, yeah, if you knew or premium. thought that it was going to be sideways, couldn't you just sell calls and collect the premium as it continues to sputter sideways and the calls that you sell expire worthless? That's an option. That's for sure. That is an option. Probably safer if they're covered. Oh, there goes Mitch dropping out on me without telling me again. This time I caught it though. So yeah, I so you know it's funny. I, I was actually thinking about that. I had a protein bar for breakfast today instead of a smoothie at Costco, of course. And uh, I was like, you know, I gotta be very, very careful. I have to not eat this at the same time that Mitch has his granola bar. Otherwise, the two of us are just gonna be eating on the stream, and that's not gonna go well. So uh, I got I got mine done already. I got you back, Mitch. No worries, my man. No worries. So Netflix first Fang name to report. And you know, okay, so maybe that's that's playing into it. I expect some weak earnings too out of some of these, Jay. Uh, so maybe that is kind of weighing on it. By the way, worth noting here, pretty pretty clean rejection off the VWAP here intraday. Netflix selling off. Uh, yeah, you'd have to hold spy in order to be able to sell come. Okay, that makes sense. You'll get there. Let's take a look at some of these other ones here. SNTI, we'll check in on. Ah, uh, looks like it's holding here. This actually might go higher. What do we have? 384 is the next spot on the upside here. Okay. And what was the... Um, Spy trying to make that next step. CIM. We'll see if it takes it or not. CIM did move here. There's, there's the pull. Okay. So here's your pullback in SNTI. Question is, where does this settle? That might help set up our long side trade. All right. CCJ not doing well today. Spy trying to push to the next level there, guys. Washroom, Mitch, BRB. Go for it. We'll see what's going on out there. What do you guys got for me? Add tier for Netflix articles says they're doomed. Could be the ad tier news. Is there an ad tier news out there? Did they give a price maybe? Megan and Harry news regarding Netflix. That could be it. It could be something like that. It doesn't even phase me when long positions swing thousands of dollars in a day anymore. Yeah, that's that's the volatility out in this market. 
Yeah, it's bouncing off the nine. It's holding the momentum right now. The spy is, I would say that. AMD was definitely one that I liked off the VWAP there. It was like slightly below VWAP. I wanted it at like 68.30s, but it went up to 68.45s and 50s really quickly. So I kind of held on and just waited. But it is looking nice right now. It is starting to come back there. We'll see if it gets back towards the highs. Tesla looking like it's trying to break through the 254 level. Looks like I might have sold that one early, but hey, it is what it is. Made some good profits on Tesla today. And it's trying to continue up through that 254. Next stop for me would be up towards the 255. All right. Not sure if my heart could handle those $1,000 swings. Yeah, they're, it, it's tough. One thing that you always got to do is just slot, size up slowly and, sh and surely on your way up. But one thing to also keep in mind is as you keep sizing up, you might actually bring the risk. Uh, higher, which will in the long run be kind of against your system that you're trying to build. You got to try to find what's a sweet spot for you. Yeah, the gap fill. I, I saw the gap fade on BTU today. I thought it would fill the gap and then get a little bounce. I was looking at it to maybe uh, take a shot on that, but um, the way that it's reacting right here through the gap, I, I don't know if I want to take the shot on BTU. I'll look for a little bit more pullback. Maybe we fill in this shadow or, or gap. <laughs> towards 2383 and then make our way back. Apple, uh, continuing on the day. And then that's one of the signs that we could just keep watching. If Apple can turn into the red, then we gotta be careful. But right now, Apple's in the green, showing me more and more that we're having a nice green day today. And there's other tech that's confirming that. Like I know Netflix is really struggling right here, but look at Square. Mm -hmm. And how's PayPal doing? I actually don't have PayPal pulled up here. PayPal, PayPal probably looks good. Square. Similar. They look great. They look great right now. Had some gap and goes here this morning. Uh, MasterCard came out with some news today. Look at that. Nice little push on up. It came out with like a crypto security platform. MA. Yep. Visa up too, by the way. That stock yesterday that had a good day. I was going to look to see if it had a continuation move, which is VSAT. I liked it yesterday because it was sleepy off that 38. Ooh, it's starting to come back. I might take this shot here on this one. This is a, a smaller type play. The spread is a little bit wide. That's the only thing I don't like about this. Got about <coughs> what we got here. We got um spread is about, we got 10 cents spread there on VSAT. So 10 set spread, you just got to make sure that I bring that into consideration. All right, I like it there. I'm going to look for a little bit of a pullback towards 38s or 25s, 39, 28s, 38, 38s here. See if I can get in here. VSAT, huge day yesterday, holding up here. I wouldn't actually be surprised if it went after that 40, 30 level. What are out there at 39.38s needed to pull back and fill me. Not going to get in on the offer here. This is Hector, VSAT. Hector, uh, good question here. So this actually plagues a lot of traders. Had my best week last week, followed by my worst single day yesterday. Any advice on how to tackle such events? So Hector, the first thing that comes to mind here is question. journaling your trades, right? Because you're obviously doing something right and something wrong if you're having these huge swings. But And by the way, this is normal. I go through these all the time. I, there have been a number of weeks here where Monday through Wednesday, I've done great, and then I've given it all back on Thursday. Yeah. So this happens, and this is going to be a constantly evolving process. Um, I'd be curious to know some of the other traders in here, what strategies and tips that they use. Please feel free to share with Hector here. I'll start. One of the things that I'll say is definitely use a journal. Try to identify what it is that you're doing wrong and then what it is that you're doing right. And then simply put, try to fix what it is that you're doing wrong. Um, maybe you're not obeying stops to your downside. Um, maybe you're buying. When I say buying, I mean, you know, believing stories that aren't fully flushed out yet. Due diligence, that type of thing. Um, depends on what you're trading. Everyone's a little bit different and everyone has different pitfalls. So I think a journal is going to help you identify that. 
Journals are key, and um, one of the things that you guys can be using um, that I've never mentioned before for you guys, if you guys want to use maybe some journaling uh, services, or maybe you just want to use Evernote. I know I used Evernote for a long time in my journaling, especially when I started. Um, as you guys can see, VSAT already taking off there, up about 30 cents, not going to get a fill there. Have my order just sitting out there, didn't get the fill, canceling it now. But hey, can't be mad about that. Um, it was a nice little setup there on VSAT. Just wasn't watching it today. And look at that nice little setup. I love when you get these little cut downs through VWAP and then a recovery. Would look for a move through 4025 today. Doesn't look too bad there, VSAT. Here's some more advice here from our chat. Aaron agrees journals are key. Dylan, this is a good, good piece of advice here. Pay attention to emotions after big wins. Your goal should be to kind of turn this into a mechanical process where emotions don't really have any place. That generally will help you make uh, clear and concise decisions. Sean D says scale in and out. I like that one a lot. Uh, Voodoo says don't bias trade. Trade what you see, not what you think. Totally agree with this. This is something that took me a while to really kind of get over. I still do it in some cases. Um, don't revenge trade. Control your emotions if you do have them. Uh, you guys were talking about... Um, taking notes, you know, I do it in Benzinga Pro here, right? You can use the notes field in the watch list. This nope. is especially beneficial if you have a list of stocks that you trade regularly. Like, I don't know if you've noticed, but Zunaid, um, when he goes through his list, he's got his list in trading view. I think it's got something like 12 stocks or something on there. He's always reviewing the same tickers every day. That gives him a level of familiarity with the different levels, how the stock trades. It's going to be easier for him to identify what went wrong and what went right in those trades. And it's a very manageable number. He's not looking at 600 different tickers weighing himself down with all that stuff. So Zunaid does that very well. Um, but yeah, you can just use the notes field here in Benzinga Pro. By the way, um, link in the description will give you a free two-week trial where you don't even need to enter your credit card. You can literally try it out first and see if you get benefit before putting money on the line. Really cool stuff. Yeah, and and I would I would second this too. Um, sizing is extremely important. And Mitch, I think you've gone on uh, discussions here where your sizing allows you to actually have a lower win rate and still remain profitable because you sized and managed your risk accordingly. And sizing and risk management go hand in hand. And and I agree with Jay here. It is probably the toughest part of trading. Um, when you change size, especially when you size up, that can often trigger emotions if a trade doesn't start working right. So it's going to be very, very important that you stick to your process here. And if you if you come up with a process for sizing that works really well for you and more easily allows you to control your emotions, I think you're on to something there. So I appreciate uh, everyone here in the chat um, offering any piece of advice you can to our community. That's what we do here. We lift each other up. Another big thing to always think about is understanding that I, I've, I've talked about this constantly for day traders, especially it seems like that's what you're doing, is understanding how to hit the break and the gas button is so important in day trading. I will slow down when I'm saying this because it is the absolute vital part of day trading is understanding when the market is working towards your patterns and when it is not. When it is working, that is our time to get in decision-making mode and make our money. Push it. Size up if you need to. It all is according to the environment that you're in. There's going to be times where you need to go ahead and be in capital preservation mode. And you said it yourself there. You had your worst loss yesterday. So you should have been able to, what, minimize that loss there. And understanding that yesterday was a day to hit the break button, not a day to continuously come back to the trade. You said you overtraded. You probably went back to the gas pedal. Let me get the next trade, the next trade, the next trade. No, when we notice it's not working well or our patterns aren't working, we go to the break. We go to sizing down. We need to learn that it needs to be kind of a flow mentality. Things are working good for me. I'm pushing it. Things are not working good for me. I'm slowing down, keeping the losses very minimum, just maybe taking sometimes some trades just to see how the market is working. That's what a lot of traders will do. They're just putting out these little tiny trades out there, see if this is working. When it starts working again, 
boom, they notice, okay, now we're getting that bullish move up again. Now we're getting that bear market rally. Now is when I want to size into the upside. That's probably what you're seeing today. And a lot of traders taking advantage of the two day move and getting that profit back into their pockets. One more thing here, Jay Rice, you're just on fire today. Whenever I oversize, I panic. Yeah, in fact, you saw that live today when Mitch fat fingered a trade yeah. and then called out that his eyes became dinner plates like a deer in headlights because he did exactly what you do. He And this is what all of us do. I'm the same way. When I accidentally buy 10,000 shares of something that I meant to buy a thousand shares of, I panic too. So this, I mean, that that's just how it goes. Uh, sizing super important here. You saw that live here this morning with Mitch. Definitely. And like always, to establish some certain rules. I think rules are important. And one thing that I will say, everybody can have rules, right? Discipline is not something that you just have. I love to, to hear people and traders all the time when I ask them, well, do you have discipline in your trading? Yeah, they tell me, yeah, I'm disciplined. Yeah, you know, my mom spanked me twice, you know, and and, and I learned, no, no, that's not what it's about. That's not what discipline is. And I think this is actually a learning lesson overall in life, right? Discipline is an actual action that you take when the decision comes. So what do I mean by that? So let's say if your rule is to th trade three times a day, that you can't allow yourself to lose more than three times a day, right? Well, if you go and you take that fourth trade, right before you take that fourth trade, you're going to have a decision-making moment. Even though it could be the best trade setup, you're going to run into your rule. At that point, you have a decision to make. Do I take the action and be disciplined to my rule and obey by what I've set? Or do I disobey the discipline in the rule and start trading? Well, if you start doing that, you're going to be subjective always at decision making. I want to be objective. I want to try to set a, as much objectiveness in trading as I can possible so that I'm not always just making subjective decisions. And so at that point, you got to go ahead and determine, am I going to do the action of discipline or am I going to go against the action of discipline and actually just continue trading? If you do continue it, it's not going to help you. One thing that I think is important is establishing that discipline, especially early on in your trading, so that you always have some respect towards your rules. Sim, what a great trade off those sweeps earlier, CIM. We talked about that right when it was uh, right in here, about 5.67. We've gone another 30 cents from when we saw those sweeps here. And this has been kind of a slower trader. We're staying above the VWAP, got all things going here. Sweeps working uh, when the market is strong like this. They haven't been in some of those down days, but they're working today. Let's check in on ATXI as well. This really kind of had that huge pop out of the uh, open and then we just faded that pop. Now we are holding here, so that's encouraging to see. Maybe this sets up a little bit later. Apple starting to turn around there. Just keep your eyes on Apple. If it cracks through the VWAP, that's not what you want to see. Tesla did make that 255. Move. Peloton. So not a bad Excuse me. There. I can't help but laugh. Every time I see Peloton rocking, rocketing to the highs, I have to laugh. Everyone wanted to hit me for talking about that news yesterday, but look at Peloton go. Look at Peloton go. It's going all right. And it ain't the news, it's just the market, guys. It just shows us more and more how we need to understand the market, right? So this had the high short interest. It has what? Of course, a lot of negative, a lot of oversold uh, conditions, right? If you look at the daily chart, you were down there towards 15 on the R 16 on the RSI, and now you're getting that turnaround. This is what you look for a lot of the time. You get an oversold market, you're looking for an oversold bounce. Why not just look for oversold stocks? It's a great way to go ahead and look at it and you're seeing Peloton get that bounce. Another one that's doing this, very similar, is Intel. Intel getting a little bit of a bounce back. Do I think this is the change of Intel? No, but I do think it was oversold and you got the bounce back. I think the short term bottom was last week when new traders were calling Dink or Swim or Chuck, uh, Chuck and Swabs to ask them how to buy bonds. Yeah, that, 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 that could be a, a good yeah, sign. You might have won the internet this early in the morning today. That's spectacular because you're, you're probably right. Oh, that's funny stuff.
And the truth is, if you don't know how to buy bonds, maybe you want to be looking into that <laughs> before you're getting into the markets. All right, let's go towards the SPY. Are we still topping out there? I've been seeing that top out there around the 376.86 level. Now it's starting to come back. Will we see a little bit of a turnaround here? We're starting to come down. Uh, Becca calling out Rivian and Lucid here. Um, so Rivian, uh, real quick, Rivian, Rivian is news. trading higher. They reported Q3 vehicle production data and said the company is on track to meet its previously announced annual production guidance. That's a long way of saying that they're reaffirming their delivery guide. Uh, 3520 here, that's moving up. That's actually staying above the VWAP. Lucid here, a little bit more aggressive of a move. And I don't think this is more just straight sympathy, right? I don't think we have any newsprint here on Lucid. Uh, we just have Tesla and uh, Rivian. And so Lucid moving along with those. All of those looking strong here today. Yeah, about Lucid there, the only thing is that... Um... Rivian saying they're going to meet their end of the year guidance. How will Lucid? You guys find out. Tan. Oh my God. I hate trading Tan. I don't know how you trade that stock easy. I avoid that stock like the plague. That ETF, that thing never trades well for me. The solar ETF? That thing is horrible for me in trading. I've, I've put that on the no trade list. Tan is on the no trade list. I'd rather trade the actual stocks, the actual solar names. Like I trade EMPH today to the upside. Um, that's all on first solar, right? First solar. Look at that move, man. Oh, man. I should have taken that swing yesterday on first solar. What a move. Look at that. Boom. That's a nice one. Rule of three that, playing to a key on I was going to say solar. confirming your thesis there, Mitch. That's what that's doing. Yeah, and I mean, when, when I when I first saw the rule of three, that's the only time ever in my whole finance career that a true light bulb went off in my head. Like, whoa, this is something that most don't see. And that's what you want to find in trading, I think. That's when you find edge, when you're like, man, I see something that most just don't even see. <laughs> Easy's like, I got it from you, dude. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's a solar ETF. I've also heard there's a, a sun one. Is it sun or is it solar? What's that other ETF? I've heard of another one, another solar ETF, but I, I don't trade solar ETFs. I'll just be as honest. I go for the stocks themselves. Like SPWR was one I talked about today, right? Um, would SunPower get a nice little lift with that FSLR move? Look at that. Nice little push there. SunPower continuing on the day. And it's a green day again. Risk off. Risk off. At least what it's been all day long. Look at that ARC bounce today. ARC catching a little bit of a bottoming action right off of their kind of bottom. So um, who knows? Maybe the, the low is in for ARC. What do you guys think out there? Love to hear your thoughts. All right, Mitch, I'm going to get rolling. I got some stuff here to do today and we'll be back tomorrow. We've had a, a nice little morning here today. Remember to watch some of these spots. Again, I think you keep ATXI on the back burner. Uh, it's holding in there so far. We really haven't given it up yet. And if we get any type of volume uh, later, later today, you might get a pop here. So take care, everybody. Uh, we'll be back here tomorrow. Stay green, stay safe, and protect your capital. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and uh, take a look here. I just want to go ahead and let you guys know I will be wrapping up at 11 today. Not going to get you guys over to 1130. Normally I do. Um, don't see Benzinga live right now. I need to check in on that. I think um, AB might be out of live trade, uh, Benzinga live, but let me just go ahead and check.
need to get ready for an interview later today. I want to go ahead and do some deeper dive into Tesla as I go ahead and get Gordon Johnson on at 1.45 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss that, guys. Uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, shouldn't should Probably shouldn't have been trading Tesla today. Bad Mitch, bad Mitch. Uh, but at least I haven't had the interview yet. So I'm all out of it completely. I ain't getting back into Tesla. I'm going to be talking about Tesla later today with Gordon Johnson. So I'm going to try my best to avoid that, uh, even though it was a decent trade today. We're going to go ahead and focus to see what's going on out there. But if you guys want to hear the bearish outlook on Tesla, come on over. Let's hear what Gordon Johnson has for us. What statistics does he have for us moving forward? I know that there's going to be probably a lot of questioning on if these vehicles can get purchased at the price, but we'll see. Uh, it's going to be fun to go ahead and find out what's going on. I need some soundproof and foam. Yeah, I do need some soundproof and foam. I, I need a lot of stuff, man. In an inflationary environment, I ain't buying it. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Square ripping on up today. Yes, that's not a bad one to catch there. It didn't do that big of a move yesterday. So, of course, it doesn't move today. Not a bad one to catch there. PayPal. Probably catching on up to what's going on there. Nice little BWAP bounce there. And getting some lift today. Some gambling stocks getting a little bit of lift. DKNG, what's up with that? Not looking too bad. But technology leading us today, right? So uh, the big names. Microsoft up 3%. Google up 3%. Meta up 2%. TSM up 44 NVIDIA up 5%. That's definitely going to help technology out. So if NVIDIA can stay into the green, well, you got your bogey. Just keep looking for that. NVIDIA is definitely coming on back on the day. And the SPY overall continuing the battle up here and not pulling back to the VWAP. Now trying to push towards the 377. Get through that 377 level and you probably see some continuation towards the upside. So it hasn't been a bad day if you're playing some bullish outlook. What time is the interview? The time will be at 1.45 p.m. Eastern, and Stock Market Movers starts the show at 1 p.m. Eastern. We go from 1 to 2 p.m., so don't miss that. It's not too expensive to make your own soundboards. I was looking up a YouTube video last spring. Oh, oh you're talking about the soundproofing? Yeah, it's not too expensive. I mean, I just got to go ahead and actually set up this office you know one of the things is I, I i move around so much it's hard for me to go ahead and set up new offices because you know you get a new office every two years it's kind of hard to you know i keep adding stuff but uh, i'm gonna get some stuff in here guys I, i'm just trying to determine really what's the best outlook for the the set here at my house you know i'm thinking about maybe having another table and then you can see me a little bit further back and then I can have a little bit of some other things, maybe getting back towards the center of the room might help. Um, I know I need a, like a big carpet in here, but like always, things ain't cheap right now, especially with the inflation um, and just trying to bounce back on the year. Spent too much money on, uh, on the wedding, you know, so trying to bounce back, guys. <laughs> wedding will do it to you guys. Hanging curtains, uh, I could hang some curtains up. I mean, I have blinds, so that's why I don't have the curtains up right now. I used to have the curtains up in my other office. Why do you call it a bogey? A bogey is not a good thing. Well, a bogey is sometimes what you're looking to stand out for you. Um, and that's just the way that I look at it. But maybe I'm using the term wrong. Maybe I got it wrong there. Agreed, great writing actors. Um, not sure... Oh, always money in the banana stand. Yeah, there's always money. Uh, Tesla starting to turn around there. Spy, what are we going to do? We just pushed through, got to that next level. Apple's the, really the one that I'm just keeping a close eye. It did start turning around. Well, that take another level, step up towards the highs. NVIDIA, the leader in tech, really pushing today. Draw a trend line. See if that can continue to hold. It is holding up right now as NVIDIA continues to push on the day. 
All right, trying to check out what's going on out there. Just checking on Benzinga Live. There you go. I think we're going to get you guys on over there. Um, that ends going to start up till 1130, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap on up as I got to get ready for that interview. Like always, guys, we'll keep battling here on live trading to try to get you guys all the coverage that we can. And, of course, stay in the green. Staying in the green today with Tesla as not a bad trade put on on Tesla. I'll go ahead and I'll break it down here. And this is a pattern trade. So let's just go ahead and try to break it the whole trade down for you guys as today's trade of the day trade strategy breakdown on the day let's take a look at it all right the strategy today on tesla was all about the spy starting to show a new high on a stock that was pushed down yesterday and so we were looking at this and then i saw it keep could make this bottom right here, right? And so now we can always take a look at this and kind of the rule of three, right? So I'm going to go to the three minute to show you guys that a little bit better here as we can go ahead and we can draw this out. So, right, you get that first push up, that's going to be this push on up, right? Then we're getting kind of a pullback, right? And so we want to always look for the, the pullbacks to support. This is where we start creating a resistance and a support, that first expansion candle, right? Then you're gonna look for another move down, right? And then you're getting that next move down here as you get this kind of move here. I'm sorry that I did a circle. Let me just do a square here for the supports. Then we get that move down here, right? And then now we're gonna get a second up move here. We get that second up move right after that when it kind of peaks on up. It doesn't wanna pull back towards the support until this red candle here, where you get this next kind of bottoming action. And so right there, up one, down one, up two, down two, you did get kind of into that uh, area right there on this kind of pullback, but that's where it gets a little bit hard to call that kind of the, the next bottoming candle there. The one thing that I could clearly see is that you were getting a little bit of a battle. Let's go to the one to see a little bit even closer there as you were battling and you get another resistance try without the support test. So in this case here, we're getting that resistance test right here without the support test. Then we get the support test and then it kind of holds right there. So when we start recovering there on the SPY, that's what we're going to be looking at for the nice little pushback. A lot of times you want to see it hold VWAP after it's cracked three times below VWAP. Does it hold VWAP on the last time? And you got that expansion up through towards the resistance. And then we were looking for the next resistance to kind of take some profit. That was around the 250 air, 254, 50 area. We were looking to take some profit. Eventually I stopped out of this around the 252, 50 as I didn't want to come back all the way to VWAP. It actually held the 252 level and came right back up to the 256, 40s. And then eventually giving you a little bit of a spike towards 255, 50s. Not a bad trade there on Tesla today as it's continued the gains after breaking out from that pattern. And a lot of that was taking a look at the SPY right around that 10 o'clock time. So we're talking about right here when you got that expansion right back through. So it was a nice little pattern showing you some bullish setup. Then it spiked there on the SPY. That's why I went and jumped on in on Tesla. Not a bad trade today. All right, that's going to do it for me today. Definitely smash the thumbs on up. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's action and me going through kind of the trade that I took and how I approached it. Like always, if you guys have questions, if you guys want to see different strategies or you want to break down certain areas in the finance industry, especially when it has to do with trading, hit the comments after the show. Let me know what you want to see more of and I'll make sure to bring it to the show and keep pushing our skills. Always here for you guys. Hit the thumbs on up. I'll see you a little bit later on Stock Market Movers. And don't miss Benzinga Live that will be coming up next at 11.30 with AB. I'll see you next time. Keep battling, guys. And come check out Gordon Johnson. Let's see. Let's see. We'll, we'll put a little pressure on the bear on Tesla. Let's see what kind of comments we can get today. It's going to be fun because, I mean, at the end of the day, I have like conflicting thoughts sometimes a lot on Tesla. I've been on the bear side. I've been on the bull side. Let's see where I end up today. See you guys next time. Hit the thumbs up on your way out.